Samsung 2 UI app is available from Play Store for free. Just search from it and install. As noted in the app title here, this is only an early access, which means this is sort of only the beta version of the app. When you open it for the first time, you will be greeted by these reminders and notes. I never really read them so I don't know what it says. Let's enable the Samsung app by enabling the red toggle at the top, which will turn into green after toggling. Then we'll need to give the app its permission to appear on top. You can just swipe these notes to the left to get rid of them. Then we'll need to give the app all the listed permissions at the upper part. You'd basically just need to tap each of the permission items listed, then it will take you to the permission settings page, just look for the Samsung app from the list, and enable the toggle to grant the app the permission it needs. You'll need to grant permission to notifications, usage access, ignore battery which basically is to set the app to be excluded in any battery optimization, so that it continues to run in the background. Let me just rotate the screen here into landscape so you will see the screen more clearly. Lastly we have the accessibility permissions, which is slightly different, since for this one, you will need go to the installed app. Select Samsung app from the list, then turn on the two navigation options from here. OK. We got all the permissions enabled. Next item here is the keyboard, which is a paid item. I watched someone who bought this, and it is not working after paying, so I'll not bother with that. Then we have the cover settings. From here you can set where you want the Samsung icon will be located in the lower part of the cover screen. I prefer to have it in the middle to make it easier to see and access. The theme selection is either dark mode, light or auto, if you want it to follow your system settings. Then you can select the toggles you want to appear in the cover screen Samsung menu. Next is the drawer option. From here you can toggle the touch feedback, or the vibration on touch. The drawer gesture, which never really works. The page animation, which I disable since it sometimes causes slowness in the response. You can also set how many icons per row to display, which I usually set to 5, but this will depend on your preference. You can also show the search bar. And even select a different wallpaper for the cover screen when the Samsung is open, and also to blur that wallpaper or not. Lastly on this section, you can set the screen timeout when Samsung is open in your cover screen. For notifications, we only have one option here for snooze length. I'm not really sure what this is for. Last section for the setup is the app visibility. I've switched back to portrait so we can see the list properly. This section will give you a list of all the apps from where you can select which of them you want to enable for the Samsung cover screen icons. So everything that's enabled here can be opened from the cover screen using the Samsung UI. I suggest excluding the apps that are confidential, like the banking apps, digital wallet apps, and such. I also want to note here that Samsung app cannot detect the dual apps. As you can see here, I have a dual app for Clash Royale, using Shelter app, and Samsung can only detect one Clash Royale app. Alright. When done selecting the apps that you want to access from the cover screen, we can fold the Z Flip 4 and go to the cover screen. From here you should be able to see the white mohawk icon below. When you tap on that, you will now be presented with all the selected apps icons, which you can open and use from the cover screen. I like the implementation of this Amsprung very much, compared to the cover screen OS, since Amsprung did not change anything from the default cover screen UI. You still have the toggles when you swipe down, your notifications when you swipe right, and you still have your default Samsung widgets when you swipe left. Nothing has changed from the default Samsung cover screen UI. Samsung just added an icon where you can access all the other apps. Instead of changing the whole cover screen, they just added a single icon overlay, which is not intrusive at all. This is how any cover screen app should be implemented if it is up to me. When the white mohawk icon is not appearing in the cover screen, just swipe up from the bottom side of the screen to make it appear. Then tapping on that white mohawk icon will open the Samsung UI with a list of app icons with the toggles at the bottom part of the screen. You can swipe up the bar below, and this will make the toggle cover the whole screen and show an additional option for the lock orientation, which does not work yet. It does not really lock any orientation regardless if you lock it or not. Then from the list of icons, you can swipe right to show the notifications, then swipe left to go back to the icons list. From here, you can tap any application icons, and they will open on their default orientation. Like this Clash Royale game which is, by default on a portrait orientation. You can swipe the toggle bar down to hide it, which is nice. And you can operate the app just as you would do on the inner screen. Cover screen OS owners should take hint on this. I was really turned off, big time, with the cover screen OS when I found out that you need to pay for app before you get this very basic functionality of orientation switch. Big turn off. It is a struggle though to play these kind of games in a 1.9 inch screen. It is too small for this function. I always drop my troops on a wrong tile, and I can't even read any of the tower health points. 
I think the best games to play here in the cover screen are those that don't need location accuracy, like Zombie Tsunami, which only needs a tap input from the player. If the game is more complicated than this, I would not advise anyone to use it. Your fingers and eyes will be stressed too much, forcing to play in this tiny screen. The other media apps like Netflix or YouTube can easily be operated in the cover screen. But unless you are doing it in stealth mode or maybe want to save battery or something, I cannot see any reasonable use cases on why would you watch something from a 1.9 inch screen. Music player makes more sense on controlling from the cover screen. But then again, didn't Samsung already provide a music widget by default? So, installing another separate app just to control music in the cover screen in another way is not very reasonable either. The ability to open the contacts or open the phone app and dial numbers directly from the cover screen is the real good use case I can see for using Samsung. Samsung Widgets only allows you to add three contacts in the cover screen, but with access to the contacts and phone app, you can call anyone. But Samsung still on its infancy, it understandably comes with several limitations. As mentioned earlier, Samsung can only run the main applications on your phone. If you have a dual app or those applications that are open for a different user or from a second space, Samsung will not be able to see that, just like what I am showing here for Clash Royale. Which I have two apps in different space. But in Samsung, you can only see the main app in the first space. When you are in this icon list, I cannot find a way to exit it and go back to the default cover screen landing page. Even though you enable the gesture from the setup, there's no working gestures here. You either wait for screen timeout or close the screen to go back to the cover screen landing page. Although there is an orientation switch happening in Samsung, it is not perfect though. You cannot force any app to be on an orientation that you want. It just automatically adjusts the orientation based on the app's default, and there is no way to change it. When you open an app, you are stuck with the orientation it will open with, there's no way to rotate it. Aside from these limitations, there's also several issues that I encountered while using the Samsung 2 UI app. After about an hour of using Samsung, the animated GIF background in the cover screen froze. This consistently happens when continuously using Samsung. Even when I force stop Samsung, the background is still frozen. To solve this, you either restart the phone or change your cover screen background to any graphical options. Save it. Then open the cover screen to load the new wallpaper. Now you can set and go back to the old cover screen wallpaper and it will start working again. It's a lot of work to solve an issue caused by Samsung. Another issue of the app is, there's no way to make any typing input when on the cover screen, unless you buy the keyboard options offered by the app. As you can see here, I am on the search text box, and no kind of text input option appears. This is where cover screen OS is better, since it at least provides a numpad input to type within the cover screen, while Samsung has nothing other than a paid option for keyboard. There's also several issues on certain apps. When you open the camera app in the cover screen, there is no control in the screen, and, like in cover screen OS, it has a flickering on screen. In YouTube app, the back button is not working at all. So, you cannot go back to the previous videos or pages you visited within YouTube and just force to exit the app. The worst app issue is on the basic note app. None of the Samsung toolbar button is working on it. Not the back, not the home button, and not even the Samsung icon. So when you open the basic note app, you are stuck with it. To exit, you will need to close the screen. Also, basic note app should be in portrait orientation, but for some reason, Samsung opens it in landscape. I really want to use this app when doing my groceries, so I'm really disappointed that it doesn't work. For the battery consumption of Samsung 2 UI app, when I first check it after about 30 minutes of using it, it was very reasonable, with only about 0.1% usage, and it was even less than the One UI launcher battery usage. It was impressive. Then I check the battery usage again after 2 hours, and lo and behold. It has been eating my phone's battery juice more than YouTube Studio app. Almost the same consumption as COD Mobile. It has consumed 2% of my battery, considering that it was only active for 16 minutes. Samsung Galaxy Z Flip 4 does not have a big battery, so for a background app to consume this much juice is not acceptable to me. For my verdict for Samsung 2 UI app, which you might already got a hint from what I am saying for the whole video, it is still a no for me. I believe Samsung 2 UI is better than cover screen OS, at least for the free stuffs, but I still cannot find any good reason or any good use case for this kind of app. Yes, it is very cool to run applications in your tiny 1.9 inch cover screen, but aside from the cool factor, what is another logical reason to do it? Why would anyone burden themselves to play a game or watch a movie or read an article from a very tiny screen? When you can do all of that within your bigger and better inner screen. Maybe for battery conservation. 
But, wouldn't a running app still consume almost the same juice regardless on what screen it is using? Maybe on emergency and you need to call someone immediately. Well, if you are really on an emergency situation and using a very tiny screen, you will probably press the wrong items more and will waste more time trying to use the cover screen as compared to using the bigger inner screen. As mentioned earlier, on other use cases, Samsung probably provides a widgets for those already. So, as much as I want to like the app, I can't honestly recommend this to anyone. Other than the purpose of showing off, I think it will cause more burden to people rather than making their life easier. But that's just me. Let me know your thoughts in the comments section below. If you enjoy this video, give me a thumbs up. If it has helped you in any way, please do consider subscribing to the channel. Nilasuj for watching. Nova Air.